Ladies and gentlemen, would you give a warm welcome to our special guest today, Francis Scott Key. Good morning. Thank you for having me here this morning. It's a delight to be with you, especially from a couple hundred years ago. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, while the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets' red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave? Does that sound familiar to you? Yeah. yeah. Sounds familiar to you? I am Francis Scott Key. I am the author of that poem that you now sing as your national anthem. I am the son of John and Anna Key, born in Frederick, Maryland, a long time ago. A long time ago. As I got older, I went to, and attended schools. The biggest thing that would probably be important to you was knowing but I went to St. John's College in Annapolis, Maryland. In Annapolis, nowadays, it is the National United States Naval Academy, where we train some of our finest sailors. After I graduated from college at St. John's, I became a lawyer. I studied law in college, might as well become a lawyer, right? And I started a law firm with my uncle. And after several years of serving in a law firm and being a pretty well-known lawyer, I was appointed, given a very special job, of serving as the district attorney for Washington, D.C. I was the lawyer for Washington, D.C. Along the way, I met this cute young lady by the name of Mary Taylor Lloyd. Well, Miss Lloyd not only caught my eye, but I ended up falling in love with her and asked her to marry me. And she said yes. And in our life together, we had 11 children. 11 children. Probably not what you're interested in hearing about this morning. I'm here to talk to you about the War of 1812, more particularly the Battle of Baltimore and how I came to write my poem. When the War of 1812 started, I was one of those who said, I don't think we should go to war. I'm against this war. I was in a small minority that said we shouldn't go to war, and the war hawks in Congress got got war passed. We declared war on Great Britain because of the things they were doing to us. The impressment of our sailors into their navy. Attacking our citizens on the Northwest Territory. Though I was against the war, I still joined up. Living in Washington, D.C., I thought it was only right that I joined the volunteer militia to help defend my city against those British invaders. And when the British came to attack Washington, D.C., I was there. Unfortunately, we lost the city. Un unfortunately, I had to watch the president's house, the White House, burn to the ground. After Washington, D.C., the British went back out to the Chesapeake Bay and set sights on my home state, my home state of Maryland, and the city of Baltimore, Baltimore Harbor. So I went back up to Baltimore to see what could I do to help defend my home city. I also got a special job while I was on the way to Baltimore. I discovered that my best friend, one of my best friends, William Beans, had been arrested by the British. Well, arrested might be a strong term. Let's just say they were keeping him captive for his safety and the success of their battle plans. You see, when they were attacking Washington, they stayed at his house, and he was a good host and fed them, took care of them, as was the custom of the day. But he did happen to hear their battle plans. So he knew exactly what they were going to do. And when they left Washington, they couldn't just let him be free to go tell the Americans what the British were going to do to attack the Americans next. So they kept him hostage. When I found that out, I said, I've got to go help get him out of that. I've got to go rescue him. And with the president's, president's permission, I went along with Mr. John Skinner, who was a government agent to, that was in charge of helping to release prisoners of war and special captive people. I went with John Skinner and talked to the British generals and said, good sirs, this man has done nothing to you. Why do you need to keep him hostage? Let me take him. I'm here to implore to beg you to release him. 
and the British agreed. They said, he should be set free. But right now, he knows our battle plans. And therefore, we can't let him go until after we attack the city of Baltimore. And by the way, Mr. Key, you and Mr. Skinner are going to join Mr. Beans on one of our ships to watch our attack of Baltimore. If you can see our map up here, we have the map of Baltimore Harbor, and we have the British fleet that came up to the southern end of that at a place called North Point. The British troops unloaded at North Point and marched up the coast to the Battle of North Point, and they kept going up towards Baltimore to attack the city by land, and they also sent their navy up to attack by sea. The British, the British Navy went in as close as three miles from the fort that defended our city, Fort McHenry. Why three miles? Because the British could shoot the fort from three miles and hit it. But the guns in Fort McHenry weren't big enough to shoot back at the British and hit them from three miles. So the British sent their navy up to attack Fort McHenry and conquer the fort, capture the fort. Their British troops marched around to try to capture Baltimore by, by land, but it didn't work out quite the way they wanted. The general leading the attack by land was killed, and the British fell into disarray, and they retreated back to North Point and back to their ships. However, the three of us were on our ship watching from eight miles away, eight miles away, when the British started their bombardment on September 13th of 1814. 25 hours later, the bombardment stopped. And it was so hazy, we couldn't see anything. We were very curious to find out which flag was flying over the fort. Was it the American flag, or was it the British flag? And as the smoke cleared, it brought incredible joy to see that the American flag was still flying over the fort. I mean, the British could not capture Fort McHenry. They could not capture Baltimore. I was so moved that I wrote four verses of a poem down. You now sing the first verse of that during your start your school day, the National Anthem. The four verses were ended up being sung to, ironically, a British song called To Anacreon in Heaven. We still sing it today as our Star Spangled Banner. It was quite popular, quite widely distributed, and finally in 1931, the Congress of the United States declared that the Star Spangled Banner was to be the national anthem of our country. Another interesting little bit of trivia that you might want to run past your teachers to impress them is this. When I first wrote the poem, it was not entitled The Star Spangled Banner. It was entitled The Defense of Fort McHenry. The Defense of Fort McHenry. The British couldn't defeat us in the War of 1814, and we've been a great nation ever since. I want to share with you the fourth verse of the poem. Most of you have not probably heard this. Most Americans don't know what they're reading four verses. Oh, thus be it ever, when free men shall stand between their loved home and the war's desolation. Blessed with victory and peace, may the heaven-rescued land praise the Father that hath made and preserved us a nation. Then conquer we must, when our cause it is just. And this be our motto, in God is our trust. And the star-spangled banner in triumph shall wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. I encourage you, young people, study your nation's history. Be thankful for the brave people who fought to give you the freedoms that you have today. And be thankful for the people who are fighting yet today to preserve those freedoms. Thank you again for allowing me to be here this morning with you. God bless you. God bless America. Have a good day.